Gaming Vault presents 11 Persona 5 Secrets and References You May Have Missed My Neighbor Totoro It wouldn't be a Persona game without some anime reference or another. So why not go for one of the most iconic anime films of all time, namely Studio Ghibli's My Neighbor Totoro. There's a point where Morgana will talk about cats turning into buses. You'd think such an occurrence would be weird, but as Mona states, Japan's denizens are pretty relaxed about this happening. For those not in the know, this is a reference to My Neighbor Totoro, where the two main characters are waiting alongside the forest spirit Totoro for a bus. What should appear soon after, but a cat bus, because reasons, we guess. For real though, My Neighbor Totoro is essential viewing for all movie watchers, and it's nice to see Persona 5 pay homage to it. Persona 4's Rise and Konami Remember Rise and Konami from Persona 4 and the spin-off Dancing All Night? Hard as it may be to believe, Persona games referencing their predecessors shock and awe, but they actually make a cameo in Persona 5. Head down to the subway station and take a look at some of the advertisements flashing on the pillars. Rise will be seen being the idol she always wanted. Konami isn't doing too bad either, featuring prominently in a separate ad. You really need to play Dancing All Night to know more about the current relationship between Rise and Konami. But as series nods go, this is just out of the way enough to be a cool secret. Then again, its inclusion is enough to make you ask when, during the series timeline, Persona 5 is actually set. Caroline and Justine Boss Fight Persona and secret boss fights go together like peanut butter and jelly. Except the peanut butter is pain and the jelly is even more pain. One of the secret bosses can be accessed in New Game Plus mode, and who else would it be but the two jailers, Caroline and Justine? To start with, you need to unlock the mementos. Once this is done, talk to Justine at the entrance to the same. After a lengthy conversation, do you really want to do this, etc., etc., we will wreck you, mate, yada yada, you finally fight the two. Keep in mind that they both have no weaknesses or resistances and possess 8,000 HP apiece. While Caroline is more about physical, electric, psychic, fire and bless attacks, Justine tends to lean on gun, curse, ice, wind and nuke attacks. Even worse is that you must alternate between attacking the jailers as much as possible instead of focusing one down, otherwise the other can restore their HP or just revive them completely. The essence of the battle is to whittle down both jailers as far as possible and then wipe them out in one fell swoop. Difficult? You bet, but that's not the only challenge you'll face. Reaper Boss Fight While roaming the mementos, you'll encounter the Reaper. Like previous Persona games, the Reaper is an overwhelmingly difficult boss fight that will occur if the player wastes too much time in the area. The Reaper in Persona 5 is no different. It possesses no weaknesses and will often target either the weaknesses or the resistances of your party members. It becomes a game of attrition as you constantly heal through the Reaper's attacks while hurting it as much as possible. Being at a higher level and possessing good equipment usually helps, though there is another trick to easily surviving. There are certain days in certain months with the differing seasons. These seasons manifest as status ailments for monsters like the Despair status during flu season. If you happen to enter the mementos on, say, November 13th, 14th or 15th, the Reaper will also face this status. In fact, it'll actually kill itself, thus resulting in easy XP. Keep in mind that this can only be done on specific days. Café Leblanc and Arsène Lupin Though Persona 5 is a game about high school life, growing up and rebellion, it's also about thievery and high-stakes adventure. As such, you'll find references to famous thieves and anti-authority figures. One of them is actually staring you right in the face quite early with Café Leblanc. This serves as the protagonist Joker's home and is owned by Sujiro Sakura. It's also used as a home base by the Phantom Thieves to plan heists. So it's rather fitting that the name is a reference to Maurice LeBlanc, who authored novels starring Arsène Lupin. Lupin was a gentleman thief and master of disguise, and has often been featured in films, TV shows, and even inspired anime characters like Lupin III. Of course, LeBlanc's name is only the beginning when it comes to Lupin references. Famous Figures of Rebellion 
More references to anti-authority figures can be discovered in the names of the game's various persona. Take the first persona that Joker acquires named Arsene. This is another reference to Maurice LeBlanc's Arsene Lupin and Arsene's get-up, where the top hat and tuxedo bears more than a passing resemblance to the gentleman thief. Then there's Zorro, Morgana's starting persona, who is a reference to Johnston Macaulay's Zorro, who wore a mask and fought against authoritarian figures in the name of the people. Remember Antonio Banderas and Mask of Zorro? Yeah, that guy. Robin Hood references the iconic bow wielder who lived in Nottingham Forest and fought against the king's tyrannical ways before being featured in a boring film by Ridley Scott. Captain Kidd is a reference to the famous privateer who faced execution for piracy in the 17th century. Then there's Carmen, a femme fatale and gypsy created by Prosper Merime, who symbolizes freedom. Don't worry though, there are plenty of persona who reference other famous figures and beings like Thor, Odin, Isis, Jack Frost, Sandman, Oberon, Metatron, and the Valkyries. Cabbages Okay, seriously, what is it with the Persona fanbase and cabbages? After Persona 4's Toru Adachi talked about cabbages being the only food he can afford, it was turned into a running gag by the fanbase. In Persona 5, if you head to the Yongan Jaya supermarket and interact with the vegetables, the player will find some cabbages. Probably a less blatant nod than we expected, but it's definitely Atlas winking at its fanbase in some fashion. Jinyu Force What's one more anime reference in Persona 5? Travel to Yasuki's palace and you'll see some Sentai action figures with what appear to be mismatched colors. Yasuke will explain that their heads came off when he was moving them, but they've since been rearranged. Creepy for sure, but the pose that the rangers are in looks very familiar. What else could it be but the pose used by the Jinyu Force in Dragon Ball Z? Seriously, as far as references, this is perhaps the coolest one we've seen yet. Yes, I may be a fan of the Jinyu Force. Shut up, it's perfectly normal. The Cake Knight Rises Looking for a reference to Batman? Specifically, Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight? Of course you are. If you watch a movie with one of your confidants, you'll hear dialogue that sounds very similar to the Joker's monologue from The Dark Knight. However, instead of using knives because guns are too quick, the character in question is talking about using pies instead of cakes. This is apparently because you can't savor all the little taste sensations. The talk of cake may also be a reference to Catherine, Atlas's strange platformer for the PS3 and Xbox 360. When it crossed the 200,000 sales mark figure, Atlas announced the numbers via a cake on Twitter. Coincidence? Probably, but either way, the cake night is a thing in Persona 5. Chainsaw Massacre The process of fusing two Persona together in Persona 5 is a little… weird. The exercise itself is called an execution, whereby both Persona are killed and a new one is born. This is accomplished by dual guillotines for each Persona. What happens when the guillotines malfunction? As it turns out, Justine and Caroline have a backup in the form of a chainsaw. That's one more way to lose your head, along with the rest of your body. Now, if only Margaret had done something half as outlandish in Persona 4. True Ending so, major spoilers here. We'll try to lessen the blow as much as possible, but if you haven't completed the game yet, much less gotten halfway through, turn back now. Final warning. So, there are several different endings for Persona 5. If you ignore the palace deadlines, confess your comrades' identities to Sai Najima during the interrogation, or simply choose the dialogue, is it really the right world in the last dungeon, you'll unlock the bad endings. The good ending is prompted by avoiding all of the above circumstances, speaking to Igor in the final dungeon and not fighting him. However, obtaining the true ending means having to battle Igor. Finish things up and you'll receive the game's true ending. And that'll be about it for this one. If you guys like what we're doing at Gaming Vault, please consider subscribing to our channel and I'll see you guys on the next video.